Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin on Monday, February 22nd, 2021. And I have just activated the Conda virtual environment that I'm going to call Pi38 because it's version 3.8 of Python that's in this virtual environment. I typed this command to do it. It took uh, quite a bit of time to clone the base components from Anaconda into that location. It went through this and now it tells me I have one and I type this command to activate it, which I'm just going to make a note of here in my journal. Oops, there you have mode, vim mode insert mode versus not being insert mode. If you think you're in insert mode and you paste something, it's going to do the command. So that's why you see those little eyes always appearing experimentally. I guess you could just look to see if you, what mode you're in, but you tend to just use cues as you go. And uh, so I want that virtual environment to sort of lock me in whenever I activate it uh, from the drop down menu. So I got into this conda prompt. So what you're looking at is an anaconda prompt, my base one, which I put on my drop down menu for uh, the Windows uh, terminal. So I can just pop up a new anaconda base whenever I want by doing that. I don't want that right now. And what I do want is the second one to be wired up correctly. So all I do is I go into my normal Unix uh, or Linux terminal. That's a drawing error, collapse sidebar. Hmm. I'm going to leave that in the video. So I am going to uh, go to settings, kind of an alternative way of doing settings. Uh, to VS Code for uh, Terminal here. And I'm going to find my Anaconda prompt, which I uh, tried to do last time but got wrong. So these are my Windows paths that have the double backslash for escaping purposes. And I'll make the uh, text a bit bigger. And I'll also turn on uh, line wrapping. So we can see entire lines at the same time. Bring that to the center of the screen. And this is correct here. That's where command.exe is still found. Uh, I have not changed where the activate uh, is found. But this location here was my first attempt. I thought it was going to be in this location here where the global install of Anaconda is. But I was wrong, which makes sense because you're not going to write in here. Even though I chose a global install for my Anaconda location here instead of in my user directory. So if you're doing similar things, you might have your uh, local user directory here. So I've got a global directory, but this, that does not keep your virtual ENVs from being written into a more uh, user space kind of location. And when we go back to here, where we created the virtual environment, you can see where it actually put it. It put it under your Windows Home, there's an invisible directory called Conda, and inside that invisible directory, there's ENVs, and inside of that, there is Pi38. So this is the path we want with Pi38 at the end. I guess I could CD into Pi38 so that when I copy that, I copy the whole thing. And so this is our settings. You'll notice that if I try and go to it currently, it's going to give me an error, not a conda environment. It didn't find it there where I thought the original location was. So I just go to where that's specified here, backspace all the way back to here, paste it in, and then double backslash my backslashes for uh, escaping purposes. And this takes it instantly. It'll also jump back to my default font size. But now when I go over to here, I can jump directly into my Anaconda prompt with my Python 3.8 
Conda ENV or virtual ENV. So I'm taking care of my virtual ENVs before I get started on the big interesting projects. So just so that you know, uh, this is the last bit of house keeping on setting up a new Windows 10 machine, a little ahead of myself, for, you know, generic Linux development. Uh, under the Windows subsystem for Linux 2. And uh, the things that you know, you're going to see in the next few videos are NB Dev, which I'm very keen on and turning Jupyter Notebooks environment into more of a uh, dev developer type environment. I'm going to show you uh, SQLite Dict, which is a wonderful way to make your uh, local Python objects into persistent uh, dictionaries, a lot like shelves, but back-ended by SQLite, which is a much more high-performance way to do it than native Python pickles and shelves. And that may be the two big ones. There, there's probably other stuff to come that I, uh, that I want to show you. I think I mentioned them in other videos, but these are the big ones. But the last piece of housekeeping is my virtual ENVs, which you'll remember we have now under Anaconda for Windows. And that's the one you saw me just do. It's, uh, I guess, under <laughs> Ubuntu <laughs> on WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. It's the Ubuntu version because it's the Python that's installed through uh, apt install the uh, Debian package manager from the Ubuntu repository. So in the same way, it's, uh, you know, the Anaconda Python for Windows that has its own virtual ENV environment called Conda. That's an Anaconda thing, of course. Uh, Ubuntu uh, version of Python on Windows subsystem for Linux. Its equivalent is just the standard pip, which is also PI, PI you know. That's where it's coming from after you do your uh, install of Python itself from the Ubuntu repository. All subsequent Python installs tend to be using the pip command instead of the conda command, which pulls from the PyPI library instead of the uh, conda repository. So anyway, uh, these are the commands for... These, this is to... Uh, these are the commands to activate and deactivate the uh, environments. That's hardly here nor there at this point because I don't use that that much. I just lock myself into one or the other by pulling it up here. If I want the base, I'll go to that. If I want the uh, Pi38 virtual ENV, I'll go to that. Now, this Ubuntu here, which is this first tab, which has the settings in it now, I'm done with that, so I'll write quit is not locked into any particular virtual ENV. However, that is the next step here, and I might as well turn this video into that and take care of it. We're not up to NB Dev yet. You can see I'm learning about this wonderful platform. But what I'm really doing is just making sure that I create my virtual environment on the WSL side correctly. So we make sure we're using Python 3. If I just type Python here, UIT. Oh, interesting. So Python 3, they know what they're talking about. So the alias to just plain old Python is not created yet on a default Ubuntu stall. It makes you type Python 3. So these uh, instructions I'm getting here at python.org are, in fact, uh, good ones. So it knows about default. <laughs> anyway, we do that command. Now, where am I going to put it? Right now, I'm in the home directory of oh, my Windows. Now, <laughs> before I even do that, I'm going to go uh, cd.conda ls. And you can see here the env location cd envs this is the location now ls that's used on the other side this is the anaconda uh, pi 38 environment which is uh, really 
interesting. I could try and activate that here on this side, but uh, I don't think that's a, that's a wise idea. So I'm going to do this conceptually and keeping it in my native home directory on Linux. So CD tilde slash, which is the same thing, by the way, as CD home slash username. That puts me in the same location. And if I do an ls hyphen la, you'll see all my hidden directories and stuff here. So why not follow a similar uh, system? So I'll make dir uh, dot, and it's not conda, it's dot, so envs dot envs, env. I'll make a hidden env location. Is that a good standard? Why hide them? It's silly to hide them. You know, I'm going to put it right on my root directory as, yeah, right on my root directory. So, location tilde slash. Never going to forget that. Pi 38. When on Linux, do stuff that is easy to remember on Linux. You don't have to follow those convoluted conventions that exist on the Windows side so that something so un-Windows like as Anaconda can coexist in a Windows environment. We get to do it differently. So I did something wrong. apt get Python v e n v. Virtual environment was not created because is not available on systems. You need to install VNV. So it doesn't come by default with it. That's very interesting. So I know that I have to sudo these things. So sudo apt get install Python 3 VENV. And now I can do that command. And uh, it follows that same activation syntax as on the conda side, except uh, it's not quite as uh, short word wise. When you want to activate these things, Yeah, okay. Source the path to it and activate. Source the path to it and activate. There you go. See, we went from not having one of these things here to having one of these things here. We can just deactivate it because your path challenge is never as great once you have your virtual env. Uh, it knows where to find commands because it actually impacts things like path. So in order to have the equivalent uh, of this, well, I'm going to do a different trick. I don't need all these things. Here I can control it deliberately, but as far as I'm concerned, so long as I'm in Ubuntu, I am also... Uh, contained to a virtual directory so I don't accidentally start doing pip installs and polluting the uh, the base install. So once again, we go into one of my favorite locations, my dot bash underscore profile, which as you'll remember, because of my aliases, I can just type profile. And as a last command, after I export my uh, display IP, my IP for my display port, I will activate this uh, location. So right quit, exit. Oh, I got a lot of things to exit. Exit, exit, control alt T. I'll show my control keys on my next video. And uh, there you have it. I'm automatically in my virtual directory for Pi 38 here whenever I start a new terminal window on my Ubuntu side. 
And whenever I pull up an anaconda prompt, I just pull up that one. In fact, I might even remove the other one to keep myself from accidentally polluting in base. So it's a Pi 38 virtual directory on each side. Although I do think I made something of a mistake because I don't think it's... Yeah, no, it is. It's Pi 38. Uh, it's it's 3.8. So I have 3.8 on the Ubuntu side. The reason I thought I made a mistake is because of all places on this plain old fashioned command prompt side. I have Python 3.9 from the Microsoft Store. The Microsoft Soft Store is ahead of the Python that gets installed. Whoops, hey, I was renaming the tab there. I'll have to remember that. That's interesting. On the Anaconda side, I have 385. So that was the Anaconda install on Windows. This is the Microsoft Store install of Python on Windows. And this is the Ubuntu install under uh, Ubuntu uh, 20.04 under Windows Subsystem for Linux. So 3.8 is kind of my current working directory. I guess that means a upgrade to 3.9 across Anaconda and Ubuntu is in the future. But uh, this does it for now. That takes care of the, uh, the last uh, house cleaning uh, effort. I added it to uh, bash profile and to um, Microsoft terminal menus and that now puts it in the path of my habits. Good habits for always being in my latest uh, Python virtual environment. And that's what this video is about. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.